hello everybody once again and it is now September for us as we begin a brand new month uh, September 2020 and um, uh, it, it's a lovely beautiful morning outside so here we are Bismarck to Wishick to Ashley to Helena Montana to Portland Oregon Tacoma Washington and we got so many friends people who have called and looked into us so um, blessings one and all the text uh, jumping right into the lectionary text for this coming Sunday uh, would be September 6th um, is Matthew chapter 18 um, and for five verses, uh, verses 15 through 20. So Matthew 18, 15 through 20. Now, uh, just as a brief introduction, um, when, uh, when we talk about uh, discipline in the church, um, we, we must go immediately into Two, two directions and we have to clarify which two directions we're going in when we're talking about spiritual discipline and <clears throat> or church discipline so you see on the one hand there is this sense of personal introspective uh, spiritual discipline which we use to um, grow deeper into our faith and and what are those spiritual disciplines that that we seek to develop and nurture for example prayer uh, and all of the uh, the aspects of prayer of contemplation of reflection meditation fasting silence introspection uh, so um, all, all those uh, subsets come under a heading of prayer, of spiritual discipline, uh, certainly reading scripture, uh, which is this intentionality of, of study and focus. Um, you, and, and then again, there's, there's many different ways to read scripture, uh, to study, to learn, uh, 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 for, for meditation, for prayer. Uh, see, you know, there's just all of those different things. Um, even friendship is a spiritual discipline because we are we are um, called to be in fellowship. We are called to be together. Uh, a spiritual dis discipline of of being held accountable, holding yourself accountable for your spiritual disciplines. Uh, you know, in your Christian walk, holding others accountable, uh, and then some of my other quick list is uh, to seek insight, uh, to find a contentment, to find a well-being, to uh, f uh, understand a sense of being forgiven, uh, to make good decisions, to be in the world, not of the world. You see, all of these uh, aspects come under this heading of uh, personal, introspective, spiritual discipline um, to grow and enrich my own faith, our own faith, you know, individually, and then how, how one's strength uh, matures uh, can then benefit others in the community. Now, this text today of Matthew is the different kind of discipline, and this is what happens when in the, in the church community uh, one goes wrong. And uh, so this is uh, Jesus teaching, um, um, teaching disciples, and this is what Jesus tells us about that. If your brother sins against you, go and show him his fault just between the two of you. If he listens to you, you have won your brother over. But if he will not listen, take one or two others along so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, treat him as you would a pagan or a tax collector. I tell you the truth, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything, you may ask for it. 
and it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three come together in my name, there am I with them. So, okay. So, <clears throat> Matthew 18 verses 15 to 20. Now, so where do we go with, with some of that? Now, um, I would say let's jump this uh, immediately into the history of the church and, and we put this into practice immediately. Uh, so this now goes to uh, the history of the church um, in Acts chapter 5. And um, Luke is telling us this story. And, uh, and here we go. So Acts chapter 5, beginning in that first verse. Now a man named Ananias, together with his wife Sapphira, also sold a piece of property. With his wife's full knowledge, he kept back part of the money for himself, but brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept it for yourself, some of the money you received for the land? Didn't, didn't it belong to you before it was sold? After it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing doing such a thing? You have not lied to men, but to God. When Ananias heard this, he fell down and died. And great fear seized all who heard what had happened. And then the young men came forward, wrapped up his body, and carried him out and buried him. About three hours later, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. And Peter asked her, Tell me, is this the price you and Ananias got for the land? Yes, she said, that is the price. Peter said to her, how could you agree to test the Spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of the men who buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out also. At that moment she fell down at his feet and died. And then the young man came in and, finding her dead, carried her out and buried her beside her husband. Great fear seized the whole church and all who heard about these events. <coughs> so. Um, so Jesus said, okay, if you got a problem, you're going to have to confront it directly. Um, and so we have this other now. Um, here is 1 Corinthians, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Here's another example. Um, and 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 1. <coughs> and Paul, Paul writes here, it is actually reported that there is sexual immorality among you and of a kind that does not occur even among pagans. A man has his father's wife. And you were proud. Shouldn't you rather have been filled with grief and have put out of your fellowship the man who did this? Even though I am not physically present, I am with you in spirit, and I have already passed judgment on the one who did this, just as if I were present. When you are assembled in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and I am with you in spirit, and the power of our Lord Jesus is present, hand this man over to Satan, so that the sinful nature may be destroyed, and his spirit saved on the day of the Lord. Okay, so how about that one? Now, um, we got another couple more before we go away. So here's Titus. We don't go to Titus very often, but we have Titus chapter 3, uh, a couple of verses. Titus chapter 3, verse 9, 9 and 10. But avoid foolish controversies, genealogies, and arguments and quarrels about the law, because these are unprofitable and useless. Warn a divisive person once, and then warn him a second time. After that, have nothing to do with him. You may be sure that such a man is warped and sinful, and he is self-condemned. How about that one? And then uh, our, our last, our fifth verse is um, um, Galatians. Paul's letter to the church in Galatia, district in northern Turkey. 
Uh, so here P Paul is writing the letter to, to, um, to the Galatians. Chapter 6, verse 1. Brothers, if someone is caught in a sin, you who are spiritual should restore him gently. But watch yourself, or you also may be tempted. Carry each other's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. If anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Each one should test his own actions. Then he can take pride in himself without comparing himself to anybody else. For each one should carry his own load. So, and then on through chapter 6. Now, okay. So, the, the focus here, you see, is uh, boundaries, structure, organization, understanding. I mean, we have to have a purpose for this. What, what does the church do to establish a spiritual discipline when one has caused profound disruption, profound anxiety, um, profound tension, stress, you know, how do you work with this? You see, and uh, so that's why there there are or ought to be um, procedures, policies in place, and and I mean profoundly uh, mature, sensible, rational people that you can uh, start to move through these issues and how to take care of, of the collective group to lift up. And so the disruption of one uh, doesn't ruin it for everybody. And perhaps you know those stories. Uh, you know those people and how they uh, have completely upset and, and ruined the entire thing. So you see, um, the text uh, for Sunday, September 6th, uh, it deals with uh, the, the discipline of the fellowship of the Christian community. Uh, not to be confused with the discipline of spiritual development within yourself. But in, in, in some degree, uh, both need to be lifted up so that they both can um, endure and survive and, and move forward. And so this is, this is quite, uh, quite a, a big bite out of the apple, as it were, um, to, to deal with, with our loved ones and, and the church that we love, our community that we love, and how to love it diligently with purpose with intention it's a big big bunch to talk about today anyway some big big scriptures so grace and peace blessings to you from jesus christ our risen lord and savior and uh, please in these days be safe and care for one another it's pastor brian bye-bye